Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm County Commissioner Al French and my guests today are Rich Hartzell, the Director of the Fair and Expo Center and Marketing Manager Aaron uh, Gertel. Uh, and I welcome you to Spokane County Spotlight. Thank well, you for having us. Thank you, Al. It's a pleasure to be here and we always appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Fair and the Fair and Expo Center. Terrific. Well, I'd like to begin the program by congratulating Rich uh, on becoming the designated certified fair executive with the International Association of Fairs and Expositions. What does this designation mean? Well, actually, Al, it's a, it is a national uh, certification that uh, basically is, takes into account uh, your leadership and management skills at the local, state, and national levels. Uh, and, uh, you know, your community involvement uh, it, it's quite a process, it's an, and it's a multiple-page application you have to go through, but uh, it's, it's something that uh, I think a lot of fair executives shoot for, and uh, it's, it's a benchmark, if you will, for us in, uh, in our uh, professional business. So. Well, you're to be congratulated, and I can, Thank you. I can tell you on behalf of the community, you, do go, you and your team do a great job with the uh, Fair and Expo facility, and so uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you. again, congratulations on your designation. So, thank you. Thank the Fair and Expo Center is a regional event facility, and it's also the home to the annual Spokane County Internet, Interstate Fair. So, uh, it's had its modest beginnings, though. Uh, it's not always been as spectacular as it is now. You want to share sure. with us a little bit of the history? I'm going to let Aaron expand a little bit on, on the history, but okay. uh, just note that we are, this will be our 64th fair in our current location, but I'll let Aaron talk a little bit about our, our history. Great. Just some fun facts, and you can always visit our website at fairandexpo.org for more information. But uh, the first fair was held in Spokane in 1886 at Corbin Park, and it was there for many years, and then it transitioned over to Playfair before it came to the Fair and Expo Center where we currently are today, and that was in about 1950. Uh, the fair was moved to our facility. The first official fair was held at our facility in 1952, and it had about 40,000 attendees that year. Wow. Wow, that's, that's impressive. So uh, over time, the fairgrounds have hosted some fascinating exhibits and unusual entertainment. Uh, you want to share with us a little bit about that? Well, uh, one of the conventions, that, if you will, that we have uh, hosted in the past was the BMW Motorcycle Convention. And this was uh, uh, several years ago, but it, it was interesting in that everyone rolls in in their BMW motorcycles and there were hundreds of people and they, they all stayed in basically pup tents out on our, our south lawn area. So, and I couldn't resist. I got up in the grandstands and took pictures of all these multiple colored tents that absolutely covered the fairgrounds, the, uh, the south lawn area. It was, uh, it was really something to see. And, you know, we have such a wide variety of events that go on to, uh, you know, quilt shows and uh, all kinds of uh, other activities that go on. So it's... Uh, it's certainly a varied, uh, varied activities that take place on our facility. Well, Motor motorcycles seem to be a popular thing for our venue as well. We had the opportunity to host the Orange County Choppers, popular television show uh, cast years ago as well. And Rich was highlighting on quilt shows, just, you know, we are sought out for many unique things. There was a woman here locally that loved quilting so much. She had so much fabric. They had to have a sale at our facility that filled over 8,000 square feet of space. Wow. So it's always interesting. So um, you reminded me of an event uh, last summer, and um, I, I'm going to be challenged a little bit by the name, but it was, uh, I think it was the Chicks or? The Farm oh. Chicks. Farm Chicks, yes. yes. Uh, so my wife and I went out and uh, attended that event, and that was absolutely fascinating. I mean, that place was full of folks that were uh, shopping for items to be refurbished, repurposed, uh, a whole series of things. Uh, uh, talk that, a little bit uh, about that. That show is just literally taking taken off. It, uh, what have we had, four or five years now in mm -hmm. our facility? Prior to that, it was in something maybe the size of a small hall. In Fairfield. In Fairfield, mm -hmm. moved to our location, and about every other year, they're adding another building on to uh, to their show, and uh, it's 
as, as you see, it's, uh, it's just taken off tremendously and we've had to add other food service areas and other buildings. The one, our main concession area just wasn't enough to handle all of the people and all of their needs. So we've had to expand uh, that. But it's a, it's a great thing and a, a show that just, uh, I see no end to that. Well, there's national attention with that show. It draws over 10,000 people in two days and they're coming from all over the country. They're in a partnership with Country Living Magazine, so that really helps spread the word out around the country as well. So, so talk a little bit for some of our viewers that might not have uh, had the opportunity to attend this event. Talk a little bit about what kind of an event it is. Sure, I say it's like the ultimate girl shopping weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, uh, shabby chic and looking for those treasures of repurposed things that have been in barns out in you know our rural areas for many years that have been found and brought in and you know people are on the hunt for that perfect thing to go in that perfect space in their house so mm -hmm. it's a really fun weekend and it is wall-to-wall -wall ladies I have to say especially on Saturday the neat thing is is when the vendors are moving in a couple days prior it's kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies are rolling mm -hmm. into town with their overflowing trucks mm -hmm. with all their treasures and they create these booth spaces that are like little boutiques and there's like 300 plus vendors there to check out that's mm -hmm. when you see the husbands is when the setup was going on they right. are they are following directions to the you know to the limit in regards do they know who the boss is and how to set it up and there's a man cave too yeah so the husbands can hide out in there as well during the weekend so back to the interstate fair uh, how's the attendance grown out of the years well it's it's done very well i think in 2007 we hit kind of a peak and, and we were looking at over 240,000 attendees that year. And then of course, as we all know, we, we hit a recession, which uh, economically, you know, it, it affected everyone. Uh, maybe not us uh, so terribly bad because we were able to hold our numbers fairly well. And, uh, but as we've seen the economy recover in the last few years, we've definitely seen uh, numbers bounce back as well. We're back up right around the 200,000 mark. And interesting thing, uh, last year especially, uh, our, our actual attendance was up a little bit, but our food and carnival were up double digits. So wow. that's telling me people are coming back, they're spending money, enjoying the experience. And, and uh, so that's, that's our ultimate goal, of course. Well, and the, the one thing that I've always uh, been impressed with is that there's something for everybody. Uh, at the fair, between the exhibits, the, um, the um, uh, displays, the activities for the youth, uh, the whole the whole nine yards. I mean, there's there's something to be enjoyed, as well as the entertainment. Let's let's talk a little bit about how the entertainment has changed over the last several years. Talk yeah. You know, I think fairs are traditionally kind of stereotyped with heavy on the country for entertainment, for country music. And we've really created a diverse lineup over the years. Of course, we have our rodeo and our traditional things, but we've learned over the last three years that there's really a hard rock demographic that wants to come out to the fair. And those are really some of our best sellout nights. So we really try to keep a variety. Like I said, with we do have our country night or two. We have more of a classic night, um, sometimes in oldies, and then with the harder rock as well. And something new we're doing this year is bringing in some of the cast members from Duck Dynasty. So that will be different because it'll be an interactive afternoon where they'll tell stories from their life and, and being on the TV show and about their businesses. But we're also going to have a Facebook contest in August where the public can submit questions that will be asked to them uh, when they're here in Spokane. Oh, excellent, excellent. So as you mentioned, uh, we try to have something for everyone, and, and I think this year's a classic example of that. And, you know, that's our ultimate goal is to, to have a diverse lineup and uh, entertainment across the fairgrounds. And so that's, that's important for us to reach out to various demographics. Well, and I, uh, I really enjoy the, uh, the music entertainment out there and stuff. And you're right, it's country, it's, uh, you know, uh, 50s and 60s, it's sure. pop, it's uh, you know, faith-based music. I mean, there's a whole variety uh, out there. And it's uh, fun for me to, to see the uh, interaction of the different age groups at some of these and stuff. So I can, I can remember, I think last year we had uh, uh, Creed's Clearwater at the yeah. fairground and stuff. And, there were folks like me in my age group, and yet there were a lot of young folks, uh, you know, college kids, high school kids and stuff, 
they're enjoying the music just as well and stuff. So it really was kind of a mix of folks uh, uh, enjoying the entertainment. Classic example of that too is when we've had Weird Al uh, Yankovic here. Uh, the, the various demographics, the age groups that, that take that in. I mean, we've had people in their 50s and 60s and we've had middle school elementary kids that, uh, that enjoy him as well. So yeah, that's right. So um, I know that the fairgrounds uh, moved to the uh, current location and uh, over a period of time, demand has grown uh, for the facility. And they've undergone some pretty major expansions, major changes. Uh, counties invested a significant amount of uh, capital to improve the facility over the last probably decade, decade and a half and stuff. You wanna talk a little bit about the improvements? Certainly, exactly. And, and uh, uh, a bond that was passed, uh, construction actually started in 2003. It was a $21 million bond, but uh, our new grandstands was constructed in 2003, which uh, can ac accommodate so many more people. It's just uh, uh, a really great facility and, and uh, meets a lot of our needs in regards to being able to have uh, uh, entertainment that draws more people and it's just a, a much more comfortable setting for the public. And then in 2004, uh, some, some of our food uh, buildings were constructed. Uh, we have four smaller buildings that actually make up eight different food concessions and many of those are uh, occupied by some of our community service folks uh, that uh, have had booths there for many years and so they were able to occupy those. And then in 2005, we did a major renovation on Bay 1 and actually created, uh, constructed Bay 4, which used to be what's pretty well known as the old floral building. Right. And uh, Bay 4, when it was constructed, even has a, a basement in it as well. And so, uh, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of major improvements taken place, uh, as you said, in the last decade or so. Well, and with, uh, with the improvements, you've also been able to expand the types of events you've been able to host out there. And so I think now you're, you're also being able to um, accommodate some uh, uh, business activities, uh, business meetings as well out there. Exactly. And we are, we actually, we gained a little over 3,000 square feet in meeting space, which we previously had not had that available. So that allows us to host a variety of meetings and also midweek, you know, trainings. We've worked with Toyota and various corporations that come into the region and, and need to put on classes. And the nice thing about our facility is they can have the classroom right there, but they, they can step right outside and do hands-on training with vehicles or power tools, lawn equipment. So that's a real nice fit for our venue. Well, with all of the um, new improvements that have been made out there, um, the variety of events that you can accommodate has, has really grown pretty, pretty dramatically. And so it's now uh, not just what you would traditionally think of as a fair and expo with uh, handling the one event, uh, the, you know, the inter interstate fair, mm -hmm. uh, you're now handling events throughout the entire year. We are. And in some cases, you're handling multiple events at the same time. So exactly. logistically, that must create some interesting challenges for you. You it wanna does. talk a little bit about those? Some sure. weekends, we will have five events going on on our grounds, so. Yeah, literally from one end of the grounds to the mm -hmm. other, but uh, it really helps. Uh, we've got a great team working out there. Uh, many of our employees, in fact, most of them have, have been employed by the county and by the Fair and Expo Center for 10 years uh, or more. And so with a veteran group like that, uh, you know, they have the experience and expertise that uh, that really helps to make our job much easier. And uh, it gets to be a bit of a routine. And obviously, we're always happy to get new events in and so on. But we go into great detail with with the promoter of the event prior to to make sure everything goes the way they want it to go. And and uh, but but the staff uh, just does a great job in implementing all of those things to make it happen. Well, and, and the, the uh, facility has really become, um, I would say, multicultural and also multi-age group. I mean, there are things for folks in my age group. There are things for youth, uh, family events going on. Um, you know, I've been to a number of motorcycle. I'm a motorcycle rider myself and have enjoyed a number of the motorcycle events that you've had out there. And, and uh, as we mentioned earlier, my wife was successful at uh, uh, getting me to the um, to the 
chicks the farm farm chicks, farm chicks yes. event yes. and yes. stuff and and I, I I'll just tell the our male viewers out there you know this is not just an event <laughs> for the females. This is an event uh, that you'll want to attend as well. There's a lot of uh, really interesting things going on uh, as part of that event, but there's interesting things going on at the fairgrounds all of the time. Uh, and uh, whenever I drive by and, and look at all of the, the folks that are in the parking lot, know that there's something exciting going on there once again. So uh, uh, yeah. congratulations on that. So, Thank you. So, Let's talk a little bit about what kind of noteworthy events are uh, coming up for the rest of 2015 and maybe even in two th the early 2016. Sure. So coming up um, this weekend, we have early Ford V8, which is a huge, uh, fun auto swap meet and lots of hidden treasures mixed in there as well. Into August, we have the Scottish Highland Games the first weekend. And then we also host the Good Guys Car Show uh, in mid-August. And after that, we got to kind of buckle things down so we can get set up for the fair. There's a lot of setup involved mm -hmm. in all of our buildings, all 97 acres of our facility. So we uh, roll right into the fair September 11th through the 20th and we start cleaning the fair up the day after and that weekend after we have just between friends we have a gun show and it just keeps rolling through there uh, throughout October we have events every weekend in November as well and as into December so you know some of the highlights coming up are the Custer's Fall Antique Show mm -hmm. uh, the man show which is a newer event for us see we've got the farm chicks and the man show so we mm -hmm. can help everyone mm -hmm. out Bell there out yes uh, we have the ski swap which is always really popular yeah. at the end of October and then in November Remember, you can't miss the Custer's Christmas Arts and Crafts Show. That's a huge tradition uh, in Spokane for folks to attend that event. And you know what we see with all of our events is people are coming regionally throughout the Pacific Northwest, Montana, Idaho. A lot of folks come down from Alberta to attend mm -hmm. our activities as well. Well, and to, to that point, uh, last week I uh, was taking a motorcycle trip up into Canada and uh, was uh, in Banff and uh, somebody had seen that I was from Spokane, Washington because of the, some of the mm -hmm. identification that I have on my motorcycle and said, oh yeah, we, we love going down there for this fair and uh, the, the um, um, uh, Performing Arts Center and some of the Broadway shows and there's a lot of really great activities going on in Spokane. Uh, so, I mean, if you're looking to have a, a good time on a weekend, boy, we yeah. certainly provide a full menu of opportunities for you. And, and we've uh, expanded our advertising into British Columbia, Alberta, and, and other parts of Canada because uh, we know uh, those, those people are accessible and they, uh, as you mentioned, they, uh, they know what's going on down here in Spokane. And so uh, we, we want to keep them informed and, mm -hmm. and keep them coming down our way. Yeah, it's, it's not that far uh, in terms of a drive, but uh, you know, when you're looking for good entertainment and stuff, this is a, a good trip. And as I was uh, having this conversation with this uh, family in, in uh, Banff, they were saying, oh yeah, we take the whole family down there and we make a weekend event out of it. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's good news for the economy and it's uh, great yeah. news for the region and stuff that, you know, we're attracting not only from Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho and Western Montana, but also to our friends uh, north of the uh, U.S. Canadian border and stuff. So, uh, uh, and that's a tribute to the quality of work and the, and the, the shows and entertainment that you're bringing to this community and stuff. So uh, you're very much to be commended for uh, some great work that you're doing on behalf of the community. So, um, so what else is new, uh, going to be new at the fair this year? Well, you know, we've talked about our entertainment and if I'd love to highlight our whole lineup. Uh, we have two nights of PRCA rodeo on Sunday. As I mentioned, we'll have the duck dynasty, um, some of the cast members coming in. We'll have air supply. Our country night will be Dan Plache, uh, opening for Craig Morgan. Wednesday night will be the guess who with the Orleans. Thursday night will be cheap trick and new this year on Friday night is a truck and tractor pull. So, and it's a part of a polling series. So people try travel all over every weekend to qualify in these and we're going to actually be hosting a final so we're excited about that and then our demolition derbies finish out the weekend and uh, those are always big sellouts for us as well and, and we know that uh, Spokane is a motorsport town and so we've we looked at that when we brought this truck and tractor pull in we thought you know let's let's bring some more 
noise to town, if you will, and, and more action in, in regards to some motorsports. And uh, a few years ago, we had truck and tractor pulls, and they were successful. And uh, we were approached by this group that uh, looks like a, a very professional group, know what they're doing. They, uh, they do travel. They have a circuit. And uh, so uh, this is something we can, we can build on in regards to our motorsports. And so we're excited about it. Well, you do a great job of, of, of bringing out a, a full venue of different types of entertainment and stuff. But I think there's one event that's coming to the uh, fairgrounds uh, this fall that is a, a community event of a different type, a totally different kind of a venue, and that's our uh, Pathways to Health. Um, talk sure. a little bit about you know, what that, that project is. Well, primarily, this is, this is something that... Uh, Basically, the, the community is, is offered to uh, people in the community that, that may be struggling with medical care and that type of thing. And I'm going to let uh, Aaron expand on it even more, but, but basically it, it is a group that comes in and they, they've gone around the country in providing free medical services to those in need. And, and uh, I think it's a, a fortunate opportunity for, for Spokane and the people here that... Uh, we're able to do this and and obviously uh, uh, thanks to you as the commissioners for helping to make this thing happen and it, it's uh, it's logistically is certainly going to be a, a challenge but at the same time it's going to be a real positive thing for the community mm -hmm. so pathways to health will be a two-day event august 3rd and 4th mm -hmm. and they will be providing free dental eye care and medical procedures at our facility. They're expecting to service over 3,000 attendees in that two day period. And right now there's already 30 dentists committed. So that's gonna be one of our big power issues is firing up all these dentists in one building. So uh, they'll, be, they'll be biopsying, they'll be getting people that medical attention that they're not able to get otherwise. So it right. will be a huge activity for our venue and for our region. And there's a lot of community partners coming together to make this happen. Yeah, I know that when they first reached out to me in terms of uh, would the county be willing to uh, work with them to facilitate uh, such an event for us, you know, uh, took the, the uh, opportunity to my fellow commissioners and we as a group said, you bet, you know, and contacted your team. And, and so this is one of those good things that, you know, we're going to be doing to help folks in our community get access to medical care. Uh, that can't afford it otherwise and stuff. So this is a big, uh, this is a big deal. So thank you very much for, for facilitating that. So, sure. um, so one of the things that uh, is always um, um, come up is, you know, boy, it's so busy out there. You know, where can you park? How can you get access to parking? And, and I know that you guys have made some significant uh, changes to try and make it a little bit easier to get in and out of the facility and stuff. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, we had a couple of new challenges confront us just before fair last year, and that was, was involving egress of our traffic from, our, from mainly our south lots. Uh, we had been fortunate for the past many, many years to access some private property to exit people out and created a one-way system. So you came in one way and, and went out the other. Well, um, for liability concerns, uh, the, the private owners decided not to allow access to that uh, through their area any longer. So we had to make some, literally some last minute changes. And, and uh, so at, at this point in time, those folks in the south lot will now be heading north uh, past our shop and will actually be emptying out onto Broadway. Having said that, uh, you know, our, our major concerns or priority is getting people off of the streets as they're coming to the fair and after they've enjoyed the day to get them back home as quickly as possible without being hung up in traffic. And, We've been working closely with the city of Spokane and the city of Spokane Valley. And, and I'm, I'm happy to say that at the intersection of Broadway and Havana this year, there will be installed a left turn arrow, which in essence will allow people that are westbound on Broadway to make a free left and to get in line on Havana to turn into one of our parking lots there. So 
Haven't had that before. Uh, we, we tried a little traffic control with some officers last year that did the best they could do, but this, I think, is going to help us immensely. And also, uh, where people are exiting, I mentioned, out onto Broadway, uh, we are working with the City of the Valley to do a, some transition in, in lanes so that the through traffic will eastbound will stay in the inside lane, and those exiting them will have a free right turn to, uh, to exit the fairgrounds and move traffic along as quickly as possible. So we, uh, we are aware of those challenges and, and uh, certainly want to make those improvements and, and make this an enjoyable experience before you get there and, and even after you leave. So we're, we're, we're down to the, the last uh, minute and a half of the show and stuff. And I, I want uh, the Fair and Expo Center is considered a show piece uh, among fairgrounds. You want to talk just very briefly about that as we kind of wrap up the show? Well, sure. And in regards to uh, exhibit space, and by that I mean for uh, interim events as well as the fair, we probably have the second largest amount of available commercial exhibit space uh, second largest of any of the fairs in the state of Washington. And uh, uh, a lot of people have come and looked at our facility to see what else they could do to, to uh, help, their, help their facilities along. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have been uh, uh, actually recognized for our, the quality of our facility and, and buildings. And, and on so. a national level, we're having the opportunity to tour some folks from the Western Fairs Association in August that will be out visiting our region. Uh, Rich has been instrumental in bringing some other events to our area that will be coming up. And the Rocky Mountain Fairs Association will be here. They represent seven or eight of the states uh, in, basically in the Midwest. And we are one of two in contention for a sure. national manager's conference. Well, it sounds like you're doing great work and thank you so much that, uh, for everything that you do for the community, but I'm afraid that we're about ready to run out of time and stuff. So if you want to have any more information about what's going on at the Fair and Expo Center, I encourage you to go to the Spokane County website. And I'd like to thank our guest, Rich Hartzell. Uh, thank you, Al. Aaron Gattel, uh you. for joining me and uh, talking about all of the exciting things that are coming to Spokane County. County Fair and so and I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us on Spokane County Spotlight and uh, uh, we'll see you at the fair.